Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday, September 3rd, Michigan City City Council meeting. If you haven't already, please silence all electronic devices, uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and a moment of silent prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Nyleb, on the roll call, please. Mr. Beatry? Present. Ms. Carnes? Mr. Dabney? Present. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Hamilton? Present. Mr. Prezblinski? Present. Mr. Simmons? Present. And Mr. Stemley? Present. We have seven present and one absent. And Councilwoman Carnes emailed me notifying me that she would be out of town, so she has been excused. Uh, approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of August 20th. Are there any corrections? Motion Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Support. Motion to approve by Councilman Beatry and seconded by Councilman Hamilton. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Minutes are approved. Reports of standing committees. Councilman Dabney. All right. Tonight's uh, Council Finance Committee uh, was called to order at 6.03 p.m by Chairman Dabney to review claims uh, filed since our last meeting. Committee members uh, Beatry and Presbylinski were present, as well as Council members Fitzpatrick and Simmons. City Controller uh, Rich Murphy was unable to attend. Claims reviewed tonight totaled $284,323.57 from the Riverboat Fund and $25,570.99 from the Boyd Development Fund for a total docket of $309,894.56. There were no other outstanding issues to discuss. Uh, Councilman Beatry moved to recommend approval of the docket with a second uh, by Councilman Presbylinski. The motion was approved, um, and the docket was approved unanimously. And then on the motion uh, made by Councilman Beatry and a second by Councilman Presbylinski, the meeting was adjourned at 6.11 p.m. Summary of claims are as follows. From the Riverboat Fund, uh, Corporate Payment Systems, $30. SHE of Indiana, LLC. $13,215.57. ServiceScape, $30,780 even. Star Uniform, $15,298 even. And there was an EFT transfer uh, payment per ordinance 4523 uh, about $125,000. Uh, that was a golf transfer. And then there was an EFT uh, police transfer per ordinance. Uh, 4525 of 100,000 dollars for a total riverboat uh, fund payout of 284,323 dollars and 57 cents from the Boyd Development Fund. <clears throat> Corporate payment systems, 615 dollars and 66 cents. Baxter Design and Advertising, 55 dollars even. The Beecher Newspaper, 1,257 dollars and 75 cents. Bright Media LLC. Uh, $9,040 even, and we create media for $14,602.58 for a total from the Boyd Development Fund of $25,570.99. And that makes a total claim docket once again of $309,894.56. And that concludes the Finance Committee meeting minutes. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, I don't believe there's any other uh, reports of standing committees, reports of special or select committees. Councilman Fitzpatrick? On uh, August 27th, the Tax Abatement Committee uh, met to review the CF1 tax abatement uh, form. So uh, the meeting was called to order at 5.05 p.m. by Committee Chair Fitzpatrick. Committee members present were Councilman Fitzpatrick and Beatrice. Also, in attendance from the Economic Development Corporation were Executive Director Clarence Holtz and Economic Development Manager Jenny Lee Peterson. Executive Director Holtz presented an annual compliance report summarizing the current abatements that were granted by the City for investments in personal property and or real property. Of the 17 abatements for the nine companies, current Midwest Michigan City paper box 
and Sager Metal Strip Company all have multiple abatements. The summaries indicate four companies have complied based on their project uh, job creation and investments. The EDCMC followed up with the companies that were below job projections and received the following explanations. Current Midwest. I would love to have a conversation with you about the tax abatement for current Midwest. Our responsibilities and those of the city, as you know, may or may not know, we have unforeseen circumstances over the last few years that have led to less employees than we anticipated in 2008 when the tax abatement resolution was adopted. We are implementing new stages, new strategies, excuse me, we feel will lead to increased sales and therefore more employees. This is far more complicated issue than an email can afford. I would really like to discuss the abatement with you, the mayor, and possibly even the city planning board. Please feel free to contact my office so we can set up a meeting. D. Martin. The employment numbers are lower than expected because orders have not been at the anticipated level. KTR. We had an unexpected period from March till June where we lost several employees in the production department, leading to a loss of our second shift. We have rehired and now restarted our second shift this week. We also hire other employees in the warehouse, shipping, and inside sales departments. Mulhern Belting. We currently have about five job openings in our Michigan City location. It's very difficult to find employees at this time. They come for a few days and don't come back. To help the situation, we are look we are working with at least two temp agencies, offering our current employees a bonus of five hundred dollars to bring a friend. They must work six months. We are currently offering as much overtime as possible to our current staff. We have purchased many new machines that need operators. If you have any suggestions, I would gladly listen. We are a very good company that offers very nice benefits, and we have never had a layoff due to the economy. The work is like carpentry, measuring, cutting, and some lifting. All of our branches are experiencing the same problems. Sager Metal. Sager's main production line for the last several years has been conveyance systems for the food and beverage in industry. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the demand for conveyance products has been shifted to international sites which, which limit Sager's ability to survey and install our products due to lack of skill resources. This has dramatically impacted Sager and our ability to maintain compliance for lack of skill resources, or sorry, compliance for the given tax abatements. We have implemented new strategic direction for growth at our fabrication business, which will start showing growth Q1 of 2020, which we fully expect our employment numbers to return to levels that meet compliance or higher. We did surpass the requirements several times in a few years back. I would ask the Common Council move to certify these compliances statements of benefits. The companies in non-compliance are due to lack of employee development. Market forces out of the company's span of control. They are in the process of trying to rectify and will keep monitoring for the next year. Once approved, the council president will need to sign the second pages of the forms to have them attested and given to the county auditor. Thank you. Clarence L. Hulse, EDCMC Executive Director. Uh, there was brief discussion about prior abatement practices, past compliance issues, and, for, and future abatements. Councilman Beatry moved to recommend the approval of the abatements for this year. That motion was seconded by Councilman Fitzpatrick and unanimously voted in favor of. Executive, Executive Director Hulse will not be present at the September 3rd, 2019 meeting uh, of the Common Council of Economic Development Manage Manager Jenny Lee Peterson will be there in his absence if there are any questions. The meeting was adjourned at 5.15 p.m. Thank you, Councilman. Does anybody have any, uh, any council members have any questions? Nobody has any questions for Janelle? Okay. All right. Moving on. Uh, we, we need to. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll follow through with my recommendation from the committee and recommend that the council approve the abatements for this year. Support. Support. There's been a motion to approve.
approve the abatements and a second. And all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? So the abatements are approved for next year. Uh, the next one, uh, reports of other city officers and departments, and it was supposed to be a proclamation for Shady Creek for 10 years of 10 year anniversary of business, but that's not ready yet, so that's being removed from the agenda. Mr. Cuss, yeah, you can go ahead now, Mike. Michael Cuss, General Manager, Michigan City Sanitary District. Um, as most of you know, I have a degree in chemical engineering and I love wastewater treatment and clean water and Lake Michigan and all that, but I'm here to talk about my second favorite subject, which is uh, decorative trash receptacles. Um, there was an ordinance, uh, I guess we're on third reading, I guess it was tabled last, last council meeting, so it's third reading again, to... Um, set aside $30,000 from the Boyd Development Fund for the purchase of decorative trash receptacles for uh, the uh, uptown area and midtown area and along Michigan Boulevard. Uh, I've written two memos on this already. Um, I wrote one on August 2nd, which explained the uh, quotes that we had received and how we came up with the justification for requesting the $30,000 and also included a map of where uh, we anticipated uh, putting the new trash receptacles, and then I wrote another memo on August 13th which discussed some comparative quotes that uh, we had had about a, what I thought was a inferior quality product, and then at the last meeting, um, uh, Miss Alina uh, Ursida brought up um, some more information about a quote that she had received from the globalindustrial.com, uh, which was the same receptacles that we were looking to uh, potentially pur purchased, they were the low quote, that's how we came up with the $30,000 figure, and um, that total quote was for $36,000, and the quote that we had was $28,000, $36,800, uh, but then she went on to explain that these included the uh, rain canopies, so I went back to the trash can, trash can uh, warehouse people that had the lowest quote uh, from the very first initial thing we looked at, and um, they came back with the price for the trash, with the canopy, the rain canopies of uh, $34,050, so about uh, $2,800 less than the global place. They also uh, asked us how it was going with the vote for the uh, resolution, and I told them that it was tabled, so they said, well, maybe we could take another look at our pricing that we had in our original quote, and they came back with another quote of uh, $26,905, so... Uh, couple thousand dollars less than we'd had before. So um, I also uh, received a call from uh, Mr. Sida uh, after the city council meeting, which I was excited to receive. And we discussed a little bit uh, about the information that she presented. And then she also went on to mention that she had a friend that could make these trash cans, if you remember. And I asked her to provide me uh, that person's name and number or information so I could contact them. As you all know, I'm sure you all know, that the city has purchasing policies, and we have to follow those policies, and so does the sanitary district. You know, we're, we're still an a executive department of the city, but since we have a board, we have our own policy that's been approved by our board, which, you know, pretty much mirrors the city policy with, with some little nuances here and there. So I explained to uh, Mr. Sida that uh, we would have to go through that purchasing policy, which is to issue requests for quotes and that kind of stuff along those lines. So, uh, and then uh, I never receive that information from her, um, but I guess that I wanted you to know what I had done since the last meeting, city council meeting, and I wanted to say that it's my understanding that um, what's in front of the city council is to approve the appropriation of, of the funds and that, you know, as the executive department of the city, we would do our best to find the, the best product that we felt met the needs of the citizens of Michigan City and so forth. and and, you know, most competitive price, and so on. So I would urge you guys to, I would urge the city council members to, uh, you know, vote favorably on this ordinance so that we can re go out and finally move forward with 
replacing these trash cans in the Midtown, Uptown area and, and along Michigan Boulevard because I think they definitely need it. It's a very nice city. Uh, cleanliness and, and beauty is, is definitely important to us all here in Michigan City. And um, I think that a more quality, durable trash can is going to last longer. We have hard winters, we have salt, those types of things, and I think that uh, I think that's the way to go. So, if there's any other questions, I would be glad to answer any questions that anyone might have. Councilman Fitzpatrick, uh, I just one question. So, the 26 9 quote you have, that's for the same quantity of cans? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And, Mr. Cuss, how many cans? In total, again, if you could 40. refresh my memory. 40. 40 cans. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know along the uh, Franklin Street corridor, it's going to go from, I think we're starting at Franklin and Ripley and going south <coughs> to Arthur right now. And I think I counted seven cans in that stretch. But, I mean, where, this, where the cans are showing now, as the new cans come in, we can put more receptacles going down Franklin Street. That was the plan, yeah, to hit some of the areas where people congregate and where we find litter on the ground. I mean, that's what the hope of this is, is to stop the litter from being thrown on the ground and have a better opportunity to collect it before it... Yeah, because the uh, owner of the building at Harrison and Franklin Street, uh, across the street from Michigan City Liquors, on that corner, that'd be the... South West Corner, uh, I, I had spoken to the mayor because that businessman requested that he get a uh, trash receptacle there. And I know the mayor said that that would be possible to do that. And then could we go further down to uh, Cold Spring Ave and put a couple of receptacles? I, mean, I, don't, I don't see any reason why we can't. I mean, you know, exactly where they end up at, you know, if they're not out there yet. And, and oh, I know. We always could be adjusted here and there a little bit. But right. uh, we tried to put this map together because originally the first time, I think at first reading, I, I wasn't here for that for that council meeting. And I understood uh, from talking to your attorney here, Mr. Meyer, he explained to me that there were some questions about where they were going to be placed. So. All right. Any other uh, questions from the council? But, but I do know there are a lot, of, a lot of business owners that are, you know, eager to get these yeah, oh, receptacles yeah. Oh, in yeah. the area. So. Oh, yeah. I walk Franklin Street quite a bit in that particular uh, stretch, and uh, they're needed. They're needed because for whatever reason, people walking down the street do not like to put trash in a trash can. They'd rather just throw it down on the ground and keep walking down the street, so... All right, uh, with that being said, any other questions from council members? Thank you, Mr. Cust. All right, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Uh, no other reports from city officers or departments? Uh, the claims docket. Claims docket this evening is for fun 2042, the riverboat claims. $59,323.57. The EFT claims are $225,000. And the Boyd Development, uh, $25,570.99. Is there a motion to accept the claims? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councilman Dabney. Support. Support by Councilman Beatry. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Claims will be paid. Ms. Nyla, are there any petitions before us this evening? There are no petitions. Communications before us this evening? Correspondence was received in the clerk's office on July 17th and the 24th for the 2019 DLZ Weekly Activities Report for ESG Energy Projects. Also was received on August 24th from John Kirk, DLZ Field Observation Report on ESG Solar Panel Projects at Fire Station Number 4 and Patriot Park. Thank you, Ms. And also, there was correspondence received in the clerk's office on August 29th from Mr. Eric Smith um, regarding police reports filed. Thank you, Ms. Nyla. Uh, our first resolution this evening by title only without objection. A resolution by title only, a resolution of the Michigan City, Indiana Common Council granting Sanlo Inc. an assessed valuation deduction tax abatement for the depreciable personal property pursuant to Indiana Code 6-1-12.1. And this is introduced by Mr. Stemley and Mr. Hamilton. 
And do the authors have anything they'd like to add at this time? <coughs> Councilman Stimley? I just want to say uh, <coughs> small businesses are the backbone of urban economics. It plays a critical role in creating jobs for local residences. Uh, Sandlow's has been providing jobs for Michigan City residents since 1957. Since 2006, the company employees rate has jumped from 55 to 88 and sales have increased 40 percent. Science Loans is a leading manufacturer of custom cable assemblies. Well, they'll be investing somewhere around $800,000 in new and rebuilt equipment. I'm sure a representative of the, com of the company can provide any questions that the council has and give more details and information about the company and the employment. Mr. Hamilton, anything you'd like to add? <clears throat> Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you for having me. My name is Luke Vanderkar. I'm the general manager of Sandal Incorporated, located at 400 Highway 212 here in Michigan City. As Mr. Steinle said, we've been in business since 1957. Uh, we've been at this the current location since the late 80s. Um, and we've been uh, owned by Central Wire Industries as our parent company. They're a privately owned uh, company out of Perth, Ontario since uh, 2016 was when they purchased Sandlo. Um, and since that time, as Mr. Steinle said, we've seen significant growth in sales and uh, we've also increased our headcount significantly. Uh, Central Wire has uh, invested in the people of Sandlo as well and um, we've increased our wages nearly 30% uh, for our starting wage right now. Uh, went from $10 to $13 an hour, and we uh, all also offer up to $18 an hour uh, starting wage based on experience for certain for certain operations. A little bit about Sandlo, we're a uh, manufacturer of mechanical cable assemblies, uh, braided steel cable that's used for uh, actuating certain devices or holding certain devices in place. Uh, you probably don't know it, but you run across our product every single day if you're driving down the highway. Uh, we have product on almost every uh, every semi truck out there, every RV. We service the RV industry in Elkhart. Uh, quite a few customers over there. Um, we also have uh, cables on every GM pickup truck. We sell cables into the hunting stand market, uh, retail security cables. Uh, if you're in a hospital bed, our cables are underneath, actuating the bed, making it go up and down. Uh, so it's a uh, it's a product that. You probably run across it every day, but you didn't know that it was made right here in Michigan City. So, um, as uh, Mr. Steinle said, we're uh, going to be making some significant investments, specifically in our extrusion department. Uh, this is an area that uh, was uh, the machines were primarily installed in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, so the technology has uh, grown leaps and bounds since then, and we're spending a significant amount of time and effort in maintaining that equipment. So. Uh, we're going to be rebuilding one line and then installing a brand new extrusion line as well, which will improve our quality and our output. Uh, our hopes are that eventually this will allow us to add a second shift to our extrusion line as well. Um, the other, other uh, item that we have been uh, looking at is Central Wire uh, recently purchased uh, the largest cable manufacturer in the industry, uh, Lucent Company about a year ago this time and there's several synergies they're located out of Pomfret, Connecticut is where their main uh, main facility is located and we've already seen uh, tremendous advantages of, of, uh, of that relationship and there's a significant amount of product that they were producing out there that uh, as we kind of grow in the relationship we're finding that it makes more sense to produce it here in Michigan City as well so um, I would ask you to, uh, to kindly uh, consider our resolution and have any questions for you? Be happy to answer. I have a couple questions. Uh, you explained the uh, the wages. Yes. Okay. And how about your uh, benefits package that you have for yep. your employees? Uh, so benefits we have uh, health and dental currently are offered. We have a standard PPO option and then also a high deductible uh, health care plan. And the, uh, the company makes a contribution to uh, to the health savings account uh, if you choose to go that route. And then uh, they also have a uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, decent uh, 401k match as well. That's very competitive in the industry. Okay. Do the employees have to pay for all their health benefits? Uh, no, they put they pay a portion. The company pays pays the significant amount of the premiums. Okay. What well, what might be that percentage? <clears throat> uh, I would have to get back to you. you know off off the. 
you know what uh, percentage the company pays of our of the benefits? Is what the employee pays? Yeah. Yeah, so the employees are responsible for about 17% of the of the premiums. Okay, and you pick up the rest, right? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions of the gentleman from the council? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Is there anyone here for the public that wishes to speak on this resolution? Anyone from the public wish to speak on this resolution? Anyone from the public wish to speak on this resolution? Having none, any council comments? Motion to approve. Support. There's a motion to approve by Councilman Hamilton and seconded by Councilman Beatry. Are there any other council comments? Any other, any other council comments? Having none? I'd just, like to, applaud, I'd just like to applaud Sandlow for reinvesting. Uh, it's always nice to see a company uh, reinvest rather than leaving a city. And, you know, the employees benefit tremendously. Thank you, Councilman. Ms. Nyla, on the vote, please. Mr. Presbolinski? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Mr. Stemley? Aye. Mr. Beatry? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. And Mr. Hamilton? Aye. We have seven in favor and no one opposed. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Keep up the good work. Yep. Okay, and our first ordinance this evening on first reading, Ms. Nyla, by title only, without objection. An ordinance on first reading by title only, approving additional appropriation in the budget of the local option income tax Lloyd fund for the purchase of equipment, uniforms, attendance at the police academy, and other related expenses to hire new police officers for the Michigan City Police Department. And this is introduced by Mr. Hamilton and Mr. Prezabolinski. And does the authors have anything they'd like to add at this time? Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, add a few comments is that <clears throat> this is due to uh, officers either uh, quitting, uh, moving on to other uh, occupational opportunities, moving on to other police departments, or possibly retiring, and we have to fill these positions, and this is part of the process by which the city is responsible for paying for, you know, guns, uh, the vest, bulletproof vesting, uniforms, everything it takes to outfit a police officer. So that is the, uh, the basis of this ordinance, and Assistant Chief uh, Williamson is here to uh, discuss this tonight, so Chief, go ahead and explain some more of the details. Thank you, Mr. President, and good evening, City Council, Royce Williams, Chief of Services with the Michigan City Police Department. We uh, came before you previously and requested 70000 for hires. Um, <clears throat> I do want to remind the City Council that we typically, through our history, have hired probably two to four a year, and uh, we, we've handled those situations with our own budget, and we always, always had $25,000 for new hire equipment, uniforms, and things of that nature in the Lloyd Fund, which was previously the seated fund. So we never had an issue. This year's a lot different because we do have a lot of expulsions from the department for various reasons, such as uh, President Presbylinski had mentioned. Uh, we recently hired six uh, that was associated with the $70,000 request, although one has since said he's not uh, equipped for law enforcement and decided he, he cut out before they went to the academy, thank God. Uh, and he's going to go somewhere else in the public public sector. We just also hired two, sworn them in previously uh, this last Monday. But looking on page two of the handout that I put out there, you'll see uh, some others that have come up since then. And looking into next year, uh, looking at all those that are getting ready to retire, we're getting on trying to get ahead of that because it does take approximately one year once an officer is hired to be eligible to hit the street on his own and make a difference out there. So we are probably going to hire another minimum of eight. That's why we're requesting 60000 additional dollars that would cover, cover that. We just previously has, had a test, and between that test, we uh, did about 
two, three weeks ago and a test that's coming up in October, we're hopeful to get those eight um, people hired. So if any there's questions? any questions, I can answer. Councilman Fitzpatrick. Uh, Chief Williams, you just mentioned that uh, one of the new hires from earlier this year left before uh, going to the uh, academy. Yeah. Correct. So the funds that was allocated for that individual officer, was that reapplied into this? So this should be... Those monies were spent, uniform, equipment, all that. Obviously, the uniforms aren't used again, but the equipment and everything's shelved. And within those monies for the $70,000, <clears> we'll go to the two we just hired and sworn in on Monday. The 60000 plus the additional monies we still have in the Lloyd Fund is going to go towards the new eight hires over the next two tests, or the next test of the previous one we just took. And with that, um, that officer that left prematurely, was there any way to uh, have him cover some of the costs, maybe for the uniforms that he's obviously taking with him? And I understand we'll get to keep the equipment that... Yeah, it's never been done before. Obviously, people have left when they decided within that year time frame. It's not for them during the probationary period. Maybe they thought it was all that and watched TV and came out and realized what the real job was. But, no, there's nothing in the rules, uh, city rules or city handbook or our policy uh, or their contract that they signed uh, that forces them to pay anything back. All right. Thank you, Chief. Yep. Any other questions for the Chief? <clears throat> A couple. Oh, Councilman Hamilton? The pending retirees, yes, have they announced that they're leaving officially? Have they came to you guys and said that? I believe most of them have. There's others that say they are, yeah. and they have not formally. Obviously, uh, you got to get in a drop program or sign something, but they said we're looking to retire these dates, so, so most of them are. Rough guesstimate, how many of our officers currently have over 20 years of service? The reason I ask is because we talked about this in negotiations. We've been talking about this. We have a, an older force, and I think this next council is going to see a lot of officers leaving in a short period of time because we have a lot of officers over the 20-year time. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the perfect storm. And uh, City or yeah, city Councilman Simmons, I'm not sure because uh, I've only been in this spot since 2010, but if you recall a very large turnover at a period of time, Typically, it's been two to four looking at our records uh, a year, but sometimes uh, when they do, just like we're doing this year, when it comes to 20 years, or we'll get them big blocks of retirees uh, that decide to leave. But we got officers that are leaving with over 40 years of service, uh, some 30, mostly 30 to 40 years of service, somewhere in that time range. Councilman Simmons, I see you have uh, reasons for leaving. Do you are you, are you doing exit interviews with uh, employees? Uh, not really exit interviews. Typically, we know why they're leaving, and some of this stuff is redacted because that's mm -hmm. private. That's a privacy issue. Um, but as you can see, reading down the line, especially in the resigned area, um, mm -hmm. they resigned for a lot of different reasons. To include the saint there, the uh, saint, the job for them, or they're going on to a different department for reasons such as better pay mm -hmm. or or what have you, or they want to just go to the private sector. Mm -hmm. Or some of these are obviously disciplinary matters where they decide to go ahead and leave instead of facing termination. Okay. Perhaps this would be a more appropriate question for the commission, police commission. It's always nice to do a exit interview. Uh, everything isn't always what they initially say until you get them off to uh, a private uh, interview. I, quite, my, my point is, how do we fix this problem? I mean, how do we stop the bleeding? <clears throat> well, it's not necessarily just a problem for us. Uh, a lot of departments, I, I, even in this area. Across the nation. I across know. the nation, um, over the last several years, uh, especially with social media, uh, law enforcement, uh, isn't uh, as popular as it used to be, I guess, as far as the influx of people applying and trying to get into this profession. So you got your ailments there. Of course, we're not going to drop standards. And uh, when we take tests or do these application exams, we're getting very low numbers that are actually passing the tests. In fact, the last test we did, there were three that were actually officers in other departments that couldn't even pass our written exam and didn't move on from there. So uh, there's, there's a lot of different reasons, but I don't I don't see why that would be a, a bad
bad thing to do for the police commission and maybe sit down and see maybe is there another reason that you're not sharing with the administration while you're leaving? Councilman Dabney? Yeah, quick question in regards to the, the, the application pool. Are you seeing shrinkage in the application pool or? The that? one prior to the last one, yes, it was a very low number, I think in the teens. Now this one, we even put banners up all over the city, uh, hit the typical colleges we do. I think there's a list of 20, if not more colleges. <clears throat> so we did get a good amount, I, I believe about 42 or 43. So it was a good number. We had hat, or, uh, 32 show up. We had a good number pass the test and a good number pass the physical agility. So we were able to move, I believe, 17 on to the polygraphs. Councilman Fitzpatrick. Um, I know, uh, I don't know if it was last week or so, you guys had uh, interviews or something. How did that go? How did the interviews go? Yeah, I mean, was it open, in, open interviews or? No, the interviews were the ones that made it to that point, the 17, and that was for the, the, the police commission that did it for those two days to try to expedite this. Okay, no other questions. Uh, I'm going to refer this to the finance committee. We're going to have a meeting on this, so Councilman Dabney will be setting that up, and we'll have a meeting here within the next week, week okay. and a half. Uh, talk about this and maybe some other discussions that come up. Okay, thank you, thank Chief. You. All right. All right, moving on to uh, garbage cans. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. We need to uh, move on to public comment on this ordinance. Anyone from the public will speak on this ordinance? Rodney McCormick, 617 Union Street. The problem with the police department, none of you got, well, Mr. President, you're not holding them accountable. People are leaving because they don't want to work for Swiss State. The, the police department atmosphere and the leadership is terrible. You had Royce Williams just get up here and talk to you. He's on Facebook, took some expunged cases that I had, took records and put them on, on Facebook. And it was racist. It was, he's a bigot. It's shameful that this is an employee of Michigan City with the comments that he made about me and Damon Carnes. He put out a whole video. Everybody's seen it. Nobody's holding these people accountable. They keep going over budget. They keep coming in here asking y'all for money. When you're going to hold somebody accountable, you got all these other officers that's been hired and they left. Why? They took our money. You gave them the money. You gave them guns and all the other fancy stuff that go along with it. And they go over to Porter County. Why? Why is it continually to happen? Nobody's holding these people accountable. It's not happening. I know you cannot appoint the chief. But it's time for you guys to hold them accountable. And you pass and you give them everything they want. But you won't hold them accountable. You're going to hear from a couple of us tonight about the conduct of the police department. And I think you guys need to start paying attention to us. We are tired in this community. We can't get, they, they don't even solve murders. We got 10 unsolved murders, four in one neighborhood. They don't even have a relationship. Mark Swistek said that he does not have to have a relationship with the community. This is a public servant. Don, when, Mr. President, when are you going to do something when are you really going to do something instead of giving them something? They don't need no more pacifiers. What they need is some handcuffs, and they need to be drug away, and the feds need to come and get them. Anyone else from the public wish to speak on this ordinance? Uh, good evening. Paul Prisbolinski, 1716 Washington Street. Um, I, I believe that uh, Councilman Simmons had a very good point on this exit interviews. And uh, I don't know, and I'm not here to critique the police department on what they are or are not doing at this point in time. But I do think that we need to answer, ask some questions as all the equipment that these individuals have and they're fitted with, is it turned back in for the next people to use it, like the vests? 
But the vests are uh, universal usually. I mean, yes, they have different size chests and that, but you can't, they are adjustable with Velcro. I know that vests are very expensive. Are there holsters turned back in? I do believe their weapons are turned back in, uh, you know, because they're not permanent uh, police officers. And I do know that a uh, bona fide police officer that retires is able, usually given his gun when he retires, if he so wishes, and he can carry it by state law for the rest of his uh, retirement, as long as he does not commit a felony. But I think that you need to ask those questions, and I may not be able to make your finance meeting, but I, I think that we need to look at uh, how much is, is there in the pool, how much you need, but I believe that we need to recruit from within. We need to take some of our hometown people, young individuals, and say, do you want to be a police officer? Here's what you need to do. Here's the criteria that you need to pass. And it's, I think that there are people out there that want to be, be police officers in our community. But it's like everything else. I think that somebody who grows up in your community is better for the community because he knows a lot of people in the community and he knows the neighborhoods. So that's what we need to look at also. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Hello, my name is Eric Smith. I was just wondering, are you going to call me up or do I do the comment now? Pardon? Eric Smith, I have a petition to speak. Do I speak now or do I speak later? I, I know that you had a communications okay. to okay. the uh, clerk's office. But okay. no, uh, you're not on the agenda to be called up to speak on the communication, but if you want to do that, you're more than, uh, yes, I can. So yeah, you can speak on it. I mean, if you want to wait till public comment towards the end of the meeting yes, to yes. speak at that time, yes. yeah, it'd be okay. more germane to the uh, subject. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other public comment on this ordinance? Having none, any other council comment? Any other council comment? Uh, this will be held over to our uh, next meeting, and Councilman Dabney will be setting up the uh, Finance Committee meeting on this. Now we get to the uh, our third ordinance uh, on first reading, uh, by title only, Ms. Nyla, without objection. In ordinance on third reading by title only, approving additional appropriation in the budget of the Boyd Development Fund to provide funding for the purchase of decorative trash receptacles for the city. And this is introduced by Mr. Beatry. And there has been, there was a formal public hearing on this ordinance on August the 6th. And uh, does Councilman Beatry have anything he'd like to add at this time? I just, uh, I've said this before too, that I appreciate the work that's been done on this ordinance uh, over the last month and a half uh, by Mr. Sita as, as well as by, uh, by our own Mike Cuss. And uh, if I understood his comments correctly earlier, what we really, what we originally requested, we can now get for about three to $4,000 less than what we were initially given, which I'm in favor of, and maybe that's a result of all the work that's been done between two months ago and now. So uh, I would hope that we would not table this again and that we would favorably pass it. Thank you, Councilman. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this ordinance? Hi there. My name's Alina Yersida, 125 East Harrison Street. I had uh, laid upon the desk there uh, the bid from my husband's friend, actually. Uh, per our last meeting, there was an issue with the gauge of the metal of the bid I submitted. I've been doing more studies and since then reaching out to friends and family and walking the neighborhood to get a census of receptacles and how the locals felt about style, price, and where they were made. I believe that 
If Michigan City wants to set our city apart from other cities, then staying local for garbage can bids is the way to go. BMF Metalworks LLC, which James Howard was supposed to be here with me today, but he was called out on another job. Um, gives Michigan City the ability to design receptacles from start to finish while also supporting a local business. By keeping this local, if there's ever an instance where the trash can gets ran over, if it's um, anything happens to it, the guy's right here in town. He's off 10th Street. Um, just to give you an idea, now this is something that he made quickly for me for my birthday. And on the garbage cans, he can stamp a design. He can um, make them just like the ones that were presented with the uh, slats in them, which is the bid that you have currently. I presented this because um, I, I got to talking with other fellow neighborhood um, residents, and they said it would be nice to have something that was stamped with the lighthouse or maybe something that was stamped with... Um, the uh, uh, Wolfpack Pride symbol uh, throughout the city. So it gives an option while keeping um, the money here in Michigan City by supporting a local business. I am absolutely thrilled that Mr. Cuss has um, beat the price. I mean, this is what it's all about. Someone coming to, co to the county council and we're all throwing ideas in and we're all saying, well, I can do this better or I can do this or I can add to this. So I'm absolutely thrilled and I, I want to publicly apologize that I didn't get back with him right away. It was my birthday and I planned a vacation. So I was not able to give him the paperwork that I submitted today. So I want to formally apologize to Mr. Cuss for that. But again, if um, you could please uh, consider uh, the mechanism I know that you guys are going to be asking for is... If he were to stamp something um, graffiti-wise, how would you prevent that? There are powder coating, um, anti-powder uh, coating, or anti-graffiti powder coating that can be applied. And like I said, there's so many options with keeping it local from um, design to being in-house of replacement and repair. So, um, again, it's another option. If you choose to go with it, that's great. If not, that's great, too. It's a win-win situation for Michigan City. We've saved money. Thank you. Rodney McCormick, 617 Union Street. I just have a quick question. Do everybody get these garbage cans? Or is it just for one area of town? Because I like to have three or four of them myself. Do everybody get them? Or are we going to isolate certain groups of people? I, I can tell you, they're going down Franklin Street, they're going down Michigan Boulevard, they're going into high traffic, dense areas. Union Street, is that high traffic? I'm not getting into a give and take question. I just want to know. I want some. I'm, I'm, just, I'm for let it for everybody. Let I'm me for it for everybody. Okay. They're only going into the business areas of Michigan City. Okay. Anyone else from the public who should speak on this? Ordinance. Anyone else from the public wish to speak on this ordinance? Anyone else from the public wish to speak on this ordinance? Paul oh, Prisbolinski, 1716 Washington Street. I'm personally glad to see that there are some receptacles in the thought process to buy them and also to put them in Midtown because I believe that area is definitely needs some help. So I, I would like to thank Mr. Cuss on his map. I know that he has some spots laid out. And also that I know that he's able to adjust his map. And quite frankly, in the long run, probably get some more and some more business, business areas to hold down that trash. And I think that the work that they have done complements the fact of how many they think they need because it sounds like they already did uh, some type of study on where all the trash is being laid out or being uh, picked up. Thank you. Okay, anyone else want a public wish to speak on this uh, ordinance? Having none, public comment is closed. Are there any council comments on this ordinance? 
Any council comments? Motion to approve. Motion to approve Support. by Councilman Hamilton and seconded by Councilman Dabney. And I just want to... Uh, Councilman Beatry. Pardon? Councilman Beatry. Oh, Councilman Beatry, I'm sorry. Uh, that these receptacles are well needed throughout the city. There are some receptacles that are like, you know, mix and match wherever they're at, up and down Michigan Boulevard or up and down Franklin Street. Uh, some are being worn out. Some have been destroyed by automobile accidents. And we're trying to keep Michigan City clean, cleaner. And we're trying to make sure that they're all uniform. Uh, and that's what I'd like to see. And I want to compliment Mr. Cuss for his work on it and providing these maps on where the cans are going to be uh, be placed. And uh, I will be supporting this ordinance. Uh, any other council comments? Ms. Snylop on the vote. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Mr. Stemley? Aye. Mr. Beatry? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. And Mr. Presbolinski. Aye. We have seven in favor and no one opposed. Thank you, Ms. Niva. And that takes care of our ordinances for this evening. Uh, under unfinished business, uh, the final accepted certificate from Guaranteed Energy Savings Performance Project. That's on the uh, streetlights. Uh, final acceptance certificate guaranteed from Guaranteed Energy Savings Performance Project on the Barker Mansion. And ESG has five change order documents. Uh, do we need to approve those? Uh, no, we I, don't have them yet. Okay. There will be an amendment to the contract. They okay. haven't submitted that yet. But okay. The change order is in effect because you voted on it last meeting to approve them. It's just getting the piece of paper prepared and signed. Okay. The All right. Uh, we also have a nomination. The council has one appointment. You Go need, ahead. You need to vote Attorney on Myers. the final acceptance certificates. Okay. Whether you want to approve them or not. All right. Uh, we can vote on both of them at the same time or if we want to Vote on them one at a time. What's the pleasure of the council? All right, both at one time. Uh, is there a motion to approve both final acceptance certificates and from um, Guaranteed Energy Savings on the Guaranteed Energy Savings Project? So moved. It's for Okay. Uh, approved by Councilman Beatry and seconded by Councilman Hamilton. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So those are approved, and uh, the change orders are on their way. Uh, nominations, the Common Council has one appointment to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Due to the resignation of Mr. Michael Johns, whose term expires December 31st, 2022, are there uh, any nominations? Any council members have any nominations at this time? Okay, that remains open. Under new business, the mayor is requesting advice and consent of the members of the Michigan City Common Council regarding his appointment of Ms. Bonnie Demke as a member of the Michigan City Human Rights Commission. She will be replacing former member Mr. Steve Gardner, whose, ter whose term beginning immediately and will serve the remainder of Mr. Gardner's term, which will expire here uh, within another month, November 1st, 2019. Mr. President? Yes, yeah, sir, Mr. B3. Can we get a clarification? Because the on the letter sent from the mayor, it says that Mr. Garner's term will expire on November 1 of 2022. And on the agenda, it says November 1 of 2019. Would you like to clarify that, Ms. Nyla? I would have to go back and look at the files to see what it actually says. I'm not opposed. I know what the mayor's letter is saying, but I need to go back and okay. check okay. to make sure what. Okay. I'm not opposed to Ms. Stimke. I know her well. I actually do a good job. Right. Okay. Uh, with that being said, 
Uh, I assume now, you know, we can make nominations tonight and vote on this and just get it over with. I don't think anyone else is going to be nominated since the mayor nominated. So all those in favor of voting, approving Miss Bunny Demke for the Michigan City Human Rights Commission, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Miss Bunny Demke is now a member of the Michigan City Human Rights Commission. Now, comments from the public. You can speak now, Mr. Smith. Good evening, President, Councilman. Uh, my name is Eric Smith. This is my family. Uh, You've been married for 31 years, yes. Yeah. Address, please. Oh, uh, 1122 Horse Street. I just supplied you guys with uh, documents of just some of the things that I've been going through here in the last couple of years. I reached out to the mayor several times, never got a response. I reached out to the chief, even had an informal meeting with him with the NAACP, nothing. There is an officer that has arrested me three times in the last two years in which I've been cleared of all charges. This guy is getting to the point where it's got dangerous. I have to reach out to the FBI to help my family because my kids are like suffering PTSD. This guy is riding by my house threatening me, Marty Corley. And when I spoke with the chief, he's, he's bagging him. No matter what he does, he's still saying, well, he's doing his job. How's he doing his job when the last, uh, I filed a uh, federal lawsuit against the Michigan City Police Department back in April of this year after they made me lose my house last year when they came and raided my house, arrested me in a neighborhood that I had just moved in where we were the only people of color. After they came and did that, everybody stopped talking to us. The neighbors started carrying handguns. They didn't know what I was arrested for. It was for <laughs> invasion of privacy of my a previous property, which you got the, the papers. And the guy that did more things, you got the papers also. Nothing to this day has happened to this guy that threatened us, broke his protective order. Nothing to this day. Paul LeVay. I've been arrested, like I said, three times in the last two years. I filed a tort claim with the city attorney. They threw me off. Uh, I filed it and sent them a certified letter back in April. And they, uh, they held me off and I kept contacting them. When I finally got in contact with the guy that was supposed to be the adjuster, and I told him what had happened and that the judge gave me uh, the paper that I could represent myself, he gave merit that they did me wrong. And when I told him that his name would be in there, the next week he retired. So now they put this another lady on here, which said now that she's got 60 days. This has put hardship on my family. I've sold two vehicles, sold TVs, sold my, same, my son's game system. That's my son plays college football. I'll be a senior this year in South Carolina. I've worked my butt off to make sure that he's been doing the right thing. And because of his hardship, he has not been able to go there yet. Because of the hardship that he, this guy just, the officer Corley, did a retaliation arrest, I just admitted it, with the federal court on uh, August 21st, I believe. That was a retaliation arrest. He arrested me down at the single man's home for no reason. They fought for me getting a body cam, which I finally obtained it after the paper from the judge. I finally obtained the body. He had his camera off. He snatched my cell phone that I was recording and deleted all the things. The only way that we found out that he did all these things it's because the other officer that came on the scene had his camera on and saw this officer Corley searching my car illegally. I thought I told him, why are you searching my car? He arrested me for saying, why are you searching my car? He cursed me. He, he beat me up in the back seat of the car. All this is on the footage of Officer Gallagher. So I believe it's 293 is his number. And nothing's happened. The mayor won't even, won't even uh, have the decency to even contact us. For Christmas, we went up there and said, look, Y'all made me lose money, made me lose my house, we had to move. My kids were not able to get anything. You know what they told me? Oh, we got some basketballs in the back that they could play with. My son's 6'4". <laughs> he doesn't need a basketball. My daughter's 15 that does her nails and does the hair. She doesn't need a basketball. This is all these arrests for me is for nothing. I've been acquitted on every charge. So what are you guys going to do about this? 
Right now, I, we're, we've got a disconnect notice. I'll probably be losing another house because this guy just had my car towed for nothing. Then he had me, I got a brother that's going blind at the, uh, at the what do you call it? The uh, old folks on whatever. The housing authority. He put a no trespass on me. That I came to go see my brother who's almost 70 years old is blind, going blind from diabetes because he put my face on the thing. For what? I didn't do anything. The guy that was in the car, but you got the records. I didn't even know he had a warrant. But you got this guy out the car. Why are you still searching my car? He opened my hood. He went through my trunk. It's a retaliation arrest. And there's going to be more consequences. And like Dwight said, yeah, there needs to be a whole lot of officers gone. And like McCormick said, a lot of them need to be in handcuffs. Seriously, this is getting outrageous. And what are we supposed to do? If I carry a gun, then you're going to shoot me, kill me, taser me. This guy's got a gun. He's a renegade. Officer Corley is a renegade. He's out here doing things to people, and nobody's doing anything about it. Can't go to the chief, and you surely can't go to the mayor, because the mayor's coming for the chief, and the chief is coming for all these pawns and pills that he's got. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Anyone else from the public wish to speak to say this evening? Rodney McCormick, 617 Union Street, my son, Tayshawn. Um, hmm. He's not the first person this happened to. He probably won't be the last under this leadership. It's time for a citizen review board. The city council been sitting up here for years. Some of y'all been here for two terms. Seem, I guess you can't just get it in your head. The police cannot hold themselves accountable because they won't do it. They won't do the right thing. It's been like that one since Mr. Simmons was a police chief. There's no accountability at the police department whatsoever. I filed seven, seven complaint forms, four of them against the chief of police. And they want me to come down there and do a, a polygraph test. Then when I agree to that, then they want to interrogate me. Then they want to threaten me with jail. I, I, just, I just don't get all this. But again, Mr. President, <laughs> you can put an end to a lot of this stuff for us in the community. This is my son. And he was battered. And we filed charges. We did everything we supposed to do. We, we invited the police into our house. Of course, we recorded it. He told the story about what happened to him. Right here, he had 10 stitches in his head. 10. He went to Doombrook, gave his story. Gave his story again and again. We have reached out to the county prosecutor. But this is all about the Michigan City Police Department. As of today's date, the Michigan City Police Department refused to turn over the police report, the investigation, because it's me. It, it, it's sad. It's retaliation. He's made it perfectly, Mark Swistek and Ron Mir has made it perfectly clear. If you do something to write him, Cormac or his family, we will help you. Since this time, the person that perpetrated this crime on my son, she has made a verbal statement that the police are going to kill me. They out to get me. She's going to help them. Ron Mir is also trying, he reached out to her and purposely interfered in my family's business. This is the mayor of our city. I, I you know, when I don't expect much out of Ron Mir. Especially when you go do something to your own family members. The sick stuff he's done to his own sister. I know he don't have no mercy for me. And I know he don't care nothing about anything. This is my son. Tell him who did that to you. My mom. Did you tell the police that? Yeah. Did anybody threaten you to say that? No. And as of today's date, nothing has happened. I was on vacation in tennis, in Texas. I just got back today. I got phone calls from several citizens out at Lakeland, Lakeland Estates. Marty Corley at it again. Pulled the individual out of his car, searched his car. Guy said, I do not give you consent. Bullied him, took his phone, deleted the video cam footage. Then gave the guy a no trespass notice. I don't know what is it going to take to get things changed. For you guys to hold them accountable. Every time they come to each and every one of you, you give them everything they want. Everything. But you don't ask them the tough questions. 
You gave him $100,000 for overtime, Don. I sat here and watched them over the week. Three hours they sat in the blue chip parking lot. Three hours. They wasn't writing a police report. He had another guy in the car with him for three hours just sitting there. And we keep paying them all this overtime. I am so sad, saddened by y'all failure to do something for our community. And there's so many people in this neighborhood, they, we are hurting. You can't even solve a murder, but you got all those new police cars. You want to keep bringing police officers in here that don't look like us, don't talk like us, mistreat us, disrespectful to us. We will never hire nobody from Michigan City. Why are we not working with the high school? Why are we not getting more minorities on there? That's right. Again, we back to leadership. It will never change until Swiss Tech is gone. There's nothing you can do about that. But you can and pass a citizen, a citizen review board. So Mr. Eric won't have to go through what he's been going through and all the rest of the city, citizens in this community. I'm not scared of them. They can do anything they want to do to me. I'm going to keep fighting back. But as, at what cost? You've seen that I've been to jail. Same thing. There was never no charges. I've been arrested by Mark Swiss Tech 28 times. I was found not guilty or the charges were dismissed every time but once. And the one time, the Indiana Supreme Court reversed the case because of discrimination. What is it going to take? What is it going to take for him to be, it, got, it must have got to be one of your family members. It must be, it had to be your son or, or your father or your brother or your sister or your niece. One of y'all, Gene, you should be ashamed of yourself. Brian Gavin, you should be ashamed of yourself. Y'all been knowing me all my life. And you in my ward. And you've been knowing me all my life. All these incidents, i never seen you one day at my door saying one thing to help me out. You, you, behind my back, you probably agree with everything they're doing. And I take offense to people that put Ron Mir signs in the yard for that very reason. That man tried to have me killed on November the 2nd right out here in front of this parking lot. Nobody's holding nobody accountable. Still don't have no security cameras out there, do we? Sad. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to speak this evening? Anyone else from the public wish to speak this evening? Anyone from the public wish to speak this evening? Any comments from the council? Any comments from the council? I have one comment. Councilman Fitzgerald? Fitzpatrick, I mean? Not Fitzgerald. <laughs> it's been a long night. Uh, one, I wanted to uh, commend Ms. Ursida for her work that she did uh, researching the uh, Trash, trash cans, and because uh, I think we got a lot more than what we initially were uh, going to get, and we paid a little less too. So I know it probably wouldn't have happened if, if you wouldn't have did the research. So I just wanted to uh, point that out, and I also wanted to uh, thank Miss Gail Nyla, our city clerk, and uh, her deputy clerk, uh, Miss Kim Sliwa, and her assistant deputy, Miss Don DeBall, uh for all the work they they did helping uh, with me getting ready for the tax abatement. Um, I mean, I had to get all of those 17 abatements printed out, the CF1 forms, the SB1 forms, and uh, they were more than helpful to make sure I had everything to review prior to us meeting to discuss them. So, thank you, ladies. You know, the council comments? Uh, I have a few uh, comments. Uh, and Ms. Ms. Nyla, uh, for the uh, Finance Committee, uh, Put Councilman Fitzpatrick on the Finance Committee and uh, remove Councilman Beatry for the remainder of uh, the year. Okay. Thank you. And also, uh, we discussed this alternative housing commission. They're starting up with Craig Phillips, and they're going to have a meeting in a couple of weeks. And they are looking for a council appointee or liaison that would like to serve on that committee. It's called the Alternative Housing Commission. So he called me this evening to see if any council members would like to uh, be on that. So let me know within a week. Pardon? <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> uh, 
so we got we have uh, we have that uh, also uh, issue came up over on Holiday Street earlier uh, no that was midweek last week I believe that was Tuesday and I got a call from a uh, a resident over there that Welsh and yeah Welsh and Kelly had showed up and without notifying the residents in that neighborhood that they started digging out for sidewalks in their uh, it's actually it's in their side yards but it's city easement it's on city property uh, but of course people maintain it and they kind of inherit the yard but the, the fact of the matter is nobody was notified that this company was coming in to do that work so that was uh, corrected and the superintendent from Washington Kelly and I didn't make copies for all the uh, for all the council members apologize for that but anyway he uh, he put a letter together he sent it to Tom Wyman from Haas and Associates who's the uh, project manager for the city on that job and basically saying that that will not happen in the future and then he listed I don't know this thing, it was like 10 or 11 projects that they have to do yet in the city and to he's going to ensure that the uh, neighbors are all notified within or at least two days before they uh, start the project and that's part of their contract is that Walsh and Kelly and Riley Reith and Riley has to notify uh, folks in the community that they're starting a project within two days of coming uh, into their neighborhoods so hopefully that's going to be uh, taken care of here for the uh, for the rest of the year well, with any of those projects uh, and I do want to a shout out to the Arts Committee Commission which uh, I happen to be the liaison to that they actually put in a piece of art on the corner of Ripley and Franklin Street right by the uh, Elson tennis courts so the Midtown is starting to get artsy and starting to get art in the uh, in the neighborhood so that's kind that's kind of kind of nice I think uh, we're gonna we we'll start getting that done uh, and uh, let's see appreciate mr. Smith coming and explaining uh, your issue uh, that you have and I know that uh, you know when Miss Nyla got your paperwork in her office that she also emailed uh, all the council members so I had a chance to look at it then but I'm glad that you came this uh, this evening and kind of gave us more insight on exactly uh, you know what's taking place there and hopefully we get that resolved in a positive manner uh, with that being said is there a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Support. Motion to adjourn and seconded by Councilman Fitzpatrick. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.